So if you've clicked this video, you're probably one of two people. A, you haven't completed the raid and you have yet to find a successful team to beat Axis. Or B, you've beaten it, you're just curious about the video, maybe I can learn you a thing or two. And some of you, I may very well be able to teach. So, let's just dive in. Let's start talking about preparation. You're going to want two Night Stalker subclasses. The tethers are instrumental in the success of the damage phases. These are really going to help you get through, plus the orb generation is amazing. You can't go wrong with the weapons of light, Bubble Titan, either. Now, what do you want for weapons? You're going to want something that has a generous mag capacity. I would recommend scout rifle primaries or even hand cannons. Then, as for special weapons, you're going to want to look for one of the higher impact ones. This is really going to make the difference. You can find the Devil's Dawn by doing some of those strikes, or even look for the brand new Crucible Sniper. Each of those is pretty acceptable. Last but not least, though I do not recommend it, rockets can work in the heavy slot, but only use that on Shanks and the Captains. If we're being honest, a sword is probably a smarter option in the heavy category, especially the Raze Lighter, and if not that, I would recommend you to probably go with an LMG over a rocket in the end. Now, as for the assignments, before the entire encounter starts, you're going to want to assign three groups of two. Two on left, two on right, and two in middle. And for each of those, you need to assign one guy to take down the captain, probably the guy that's got the sword that can melt him in quickness, and the other guy to be what we call the rotator. This guy is in charge of throwing the ball when it drops, and he's also in charge of killing the shanks and protecting the guy that is killing the captain, and of course, he's going to be in the rotator position. So when people are empowered in different areas and he needs to trade with somebody, it's his job to be mobile. As for how you play this thing out, it's simple. Callouts are everything. Communication is a necessity. I won't even do this unless we have all six of us with microphones. It's completely important. Now there are four areas that Axis can teleport. There's left, there's right, there's mid, and there's back. He's currently sitting at back right now. So now that he's already here, if he was to teleport again, he can either only go left, right, or mid, allowing us to separate and disperse our empowered characters. During every empowered phase, the cue is for everybody to say empowered, insert whatever side they're on. So if I was to say empowered mid, and then there were two guys on left that said empowered left, empowered left, one of those would trade with the guy that rotates on right side so that we have one empowered left, one empowered right, and one empowered mid. Thus making everything completely safe. Now I'm gonna walk you through an entire rotation phase, be it this is gonna be a little slow, but I wanna make sure all of you guys understand exactly what you have to do, how you need to rotate, what you need to call out, and what is necessary of you. We're gonna bypass the whole servitor phase. You guys should know how to do it. You made it this far in the raid. It's pretty simple. You match the color to the servitor and that's how he drops the charge. You take that ball and when all three of them are thrown at Axis, it begins the damage phase and he teleports for the first time. So. At this point, hopefully you have one guy that's empowered at each of the locations, but you're asking yourself, okay, so he's got four potential places to teleport, how do you know which one he's going to go to? The guy that's empowered middle, you make sure that he watches the back area. The place right here in middle, you can see that anyone can access with ease. Anyone from the left, right, or back side can get there and dunk on him in time. After this point, he can only teleport to one of the three other locations, making it so that you have to have one person watching back, left, and right in case he teleports to whichever side. Every teleport, he stands still a little longer, allowing you to deal more damage during those phases. So in phase one damage, he's only going to be there a few seconds. Use your primaries. The second phase, you can start stepping up to special. Do not bother wasting heavy on Axis. Save that for the ads. Now, on the third and final teleport, this is where you do the bulk of your damage, and you're going to do it with specials. This is when you're going to pop and chain your Night Stalker supers, and you're going to use the cannons, at least what's left over of them. The cannons are essential to getting this done in a fast method. Now, they do a lot of bulk damage, and what's so interesting about them is if you pay attention to the projectile itself, when it sinks into him, you'll notice after about two or three seconds, the glow will get even bigger and brighter. That means it's at max damage, and you can let go of the trigger altogether and get ready to fire another one. You probably saw me do it right there, so if you're holding it the whole time, you're missing out on a whole lot of damage. After you've beaten him on all three of his teleports, you run back to one of these totems. These little areas keep you safe while he detonates. From here, you just return to where you started, reset so it's 2-2-2, two, two, and two, and when the empowered phase comes back up, you make sure you rotate like you need to. Every time he teleports, starts and triggers another empowered phase. So communication is key. That's the one area that people mess up. 
It's the hardest thing to get down, especially when you're playing with new people. You gotta make sure people are calling out empowered mid, empowered left, empowered right. So that way you hear one overlapping, you know that somebody, the rotators, have to switch with every side they need to. One last tip I can leave you guys with is the moment he teleports, when he spreads his cheeks and he's wide open for you guys to dunk on him, you can also deal damage to him during that area. Again, do not waste with heavy or special. Use your primary. So he's sitting still, he's vulnerable. Before any of you guys detonate on his back, you can still all be doing damage. So there should be five of you shooting him when he's in that phase standing still. Then he's going to rear up in pain. You can do the headshot damage. Then he'll teleport again. And when he teleports again, still peel into him with your primary weapon until he's detonated again and repeat the process. It's going to allow you to get a little bit of extra damage in every time he teleports. And a lot of people do not know that you can do this. So that's it, guys. That's all it takes. It seems like a lot. And there are quite a few mechanics to juggle at once. There's a lot of responsibility on the guy to take down the captain. There's a lot of pressure on the guy to throw the ball. There's a lot of pressure on the people that rotate, especially because they need to make sure that they're communicating, they're rotating the right way, the right side, and they're doing a lot of that at once. So thank you guys for watching. If you found this video useful, be sure to subscribe. Lots more videos and reviews in the future. And of course, leave a thumbs up as it helps out. Share this with your friends, learn to communicate right, set the callouts, assign particular roles, and you can beat this first time every time. Very easy to do.